needs to take out their two prompts they picked up yesterday, and you need a bunch of papers. I have stacks of white line paper over there. If you don't have any, you are more than welcome to help yourself. Everyone needs to be prepared. You're going to be multiple sheets of paper. Okay. With your rubrics out, I cannot stress the faster you move, the better your quality of life is. Because the faster we move means the more essays I plan. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Because if not, you're writing three essays by yourself. Yeah, you don't want to write three essays by yourself. So let me do my job, answer my questions quickly and promptly, and life will be better. Isn't that nice? Okay, what you should have been talking with your neighbors is that you have heard AP Writing Week is really, really hard. Yes? Yes. You will survive. You will be fine. But yes, it is hard. You need to understand that this is 77% of your AP score is writing. So if you can't write, you will not pass. That is why we do writing weeks. Second thing you need to understand is I have zero tolerance for not bringing your assignment when it's due. So every day you will have assignments due. Is everyone clear? Every single day, you will have every single one of them. If you don't turn in your assignments on a Thursday, I obviously call you out and ask where they are. But you're hurting yourself, not other kids. During writing week, you're hurting other kids because we do a lot of trading and grading. Is everyone clear? You and your laziness, inability to plan, whatever your excuse is, is not a good enough excuse to stop someone else from gaining an opportunity. Is everyone clear? If you are going to be absent next week, then do whatever you can to stay ahead or you'll drown. Because as soon as we finish writing week, guess what we go right into? Content. And we are moving faster than we've ever gone. You will see the pace is going to pick up absolutely significantly because now you understand why we're doing all the things. Third thing you need to understand is that you will survive. It'll be fine. And then you'll look back on week one and you'll be like, oh my God, that was first writing week. Oh my God, that was so cute. Because the other ones will be harder. <laughs> so you will survive. You have things to do. Uh, manage your schedule. You don't have me till seventh period, so you could do things during the day. Does that make sense? I would, as soon as you can, use your time efficiently and get ahead of things. Is everyone clear? The best way to get ahead it's to talk to me in class because the faster you talk, the faster I write, the easier your life is at home. Is everyone clear on that? You will see today how important it is. You will also see full circle what it means when all the things that we've been doing in class are going to come through on these essays. All right. Take out the two prompts that I had you pick up yesterday. At the top of the prompts, okay, on the top of what looks like this, I want you to write stimulus. On the one that looks like this, I want you to write prompts. What, Kelly? Um, yeah, yes, everything is handwritten, absolutely, entirely. Because of the day on May 15th, it, everything's handwritten. So, okay, if you look on my board over here, you will notice I only have Friday filled in. Because depending on how well you do on today's essays on Monday dictates how well your Tuesday's gonna go, how well your Wednesday's going to go. Nothing is completely and utterly planned out. I clearly have a direction. I know what we're doing. But how many essays we write are completely based on how successful you are. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so looking at my board, you are doing prompt one. So on the sheet that we just wrote prompts, you're only answering question number one. If you look at the other one, it says stimulus at the top. You are answering questions number two and number four for homework. Is everyone clear on that? Number two and number four are for homework. Is everyone clear on that? So making sure your pages are labeled, that's how we'll be discussing all these prompts for the whole week. Is everyone clear? Okay. So you have three essays. Every single thing that you do during writing week will be score, uh, graded. Is everyone clear on that? I am not here out of the kindness of my heart. I get a really terrible check every two weeks. That justifies me being here. 
okay? You get paid in points. So every single essay that you write will get at least 10 points. Is everyone clear? The essays that we actually score on correctness, ah, how fun, are going to be significantly high between 16, 24, and 50 points, okay? So um, every single thing that you do in this class will get graded because you aren't doing anything for free because you, you're worthy, your time is important. Is everyone clear? So make sure you are staying up on it. It is a nice week to solidify your grade and add a little bit. It is devastating if you do not stay on top of it. Is everyone clear? I'm not saying you need to have perfect essays. I'm saying that you are writing and doing what you need to be doing. Is everyone clear? I'm not looking for perfection, not in week one, okay? Um, I'm looking for effort, and that's what I care most about. Okay, here we go. Let's go to stimulus two. Let's do stimulus two. Okay, what you need to know in your notebook or one of your sheets, I need you to write this down as I am writing it down. Okay, at the top of your notebook or on a sheet of paper, you're going to write SAQ, SA rubric. Write it down. SAQ, ru SA rubric. What does SAQ stand for? What is it, Thomas? Short answer question. Short answer question. That's the abbreviation. On your day on May 15th, you will have 40 minutes. Uh, to write four questions, four answers, uh, three, three questions. You have 40 minutes to answer three questions. It's very fast. It's very fast. So you have to be incredibly good at this. So what does it mean? What do you have to be able to do? You need to restate the prompt. That's the first thing you get points for. You need to correctly Identify the topic, parenthesis answer, the flat out answer. It's going to ask you for a question and you have to flat out know the answer. Then the third thing you need to do is provide two pieces of evidence. When I say two pieces of evidence, what do I actually mean? I've been talking about this for weeks now, telling you it's coming to this. When I say evidence, what do I actually mean, Dylan? Vocab, vocab terms. Yeah, so you need to know two vocab terms about whatever you're talking about. Okay? And then you have a thing called analysis. This is what you're going to struggle the most with. And no offense, I say this with love, you're not going to be very good at it. It's a skill. It'll come. You'll be fine. But we have to practice it in order to get it. Analysis is connect what you have written back to the prompt. Tie it back. Okay, then put a star, repeat, format as many times as necessary. So essentially, all of this is one paragraph. Essentially, it's one paragraph. That's what it is. So let's quickly look at our second question. If you look, OK, answer in your response. Be sure to address all the parts of the question. Use complete sentences and outline or bulleted list. Answer all parts of the question. How many questions are there? Three. So how many times are you doing this? Three times. Some questions have two. Some questions have four. Some questions have one. Is everyone clear on that? So it just depends on how many aspects they have. OK, when you are writing this weekend, you need to have this out on your desk, yes, to make sure. Because when you get a graded essay this week, guess what your rubrics look like? <laughs> exactly that. This isn't a trick. I'm holding you accountable. You know exactly what the rubric looks like. Of course, it's always curtailed to whatever the question is asking. Yes, correctly identify whatever it's asking. But you need to have this out on the desk in front of you. Get a new sheet of paper. Here we go. I told you you need multiple. You need to uh, hole punch all of these and put them into your binder. Is everyone clear? Your writing week, honestly, I was just talking to a bunch of A push kids. Kids I had last year are now in A push. They are like cuddling with their binders because of their writing week stuff. 
because no other teacher is going to teach you writing like Samantha Bennett teaches you writing. And guess what? All of your writing works for every single class you'll take for the rest of your life. No one likes teaching writing. I hate teaching writing. I'm a social studies teacher. This isn't my forte, but it's a skill you have to have. Is everyone clear? So these, this will help you later in life. Okay, so we are going to start with SAQ. Number two, every time you start an essay, you always start on a new sheet of paper and you label that piece of paper. This is the formatting I expect for the rest of the year. So we're gonna start on SAQ number two. Here we go. Answer all parts of the following question. Identify one way in which African states or societies changed as a result of the spread of Islam in the period circa 1200 to 1450. Couple of things I want you to know. They're giving you dates. Do you notice? Okay. Going forward, the dates are going to be super valuable because as of right now, you've only been in 1200 to 1450, so we haven't had to talk about date ranges because everything we've done is all in one date range. As we go forward, if you talk about something out of date range, everything you wrote is a zero. <laughs> Literally, you've wasted your entire time. So if you start talking about, you know, um, the kingdom of Nzinga, that's not in 1200 to 1450, everything is wrong. So date ranges matter. Going forward, as I'm teaching you about your date ranges, you need to be paying attention to that because all of your essays are in a date range. Is everyone clear? Okay, the next thing you should have noticed, okay, it is asking you about the connection of something to something else, yes? It's not just regurgitation of facts. It's about understanding why this happened and caused something else. Isn't that what I've been telling you this whole time? That is why I'm pushing you here. Here we go. Who can give me? This is where your quick responses means I write things faster, which means you have less homework comes about. Here we go. Who can tell me what is one way African states or societies change as a result of the spread of Islam? Luke. Of the increase of trade. Of trade. Here we go. So on your notes, write A, increase trade. This is our planning. Every single one of you will plan every essay for me. If I am 36 and still planning, you at whatever. I don't even want to know what age you people are. Um, uh, you definitely need to plan. Okay, so everything we talk about is always going back to increasing trade. We need to come up with evidence that shows. So what is the vocab term that talks about trade increasing in Africa? Anything that has to do with it. What do you got, Nola? Okay, how about we stick with camels? Because you don't have camel saddles unless you have... Camels, okay? So why do we need camels, Nola, to increase trade? Because they can carry large loads of goods. Mm. Why camels? We're in Africa. Why camels? Get to the root of it, also Nola. The desert and camels are okay, needed. And they can travel long distances. Needed to cross Saharan. Okay. Needed to cross Saharan Desert. Okay, what's another vocab term that we can use that we know? Guys, well, Saharan Desert, what trade route is included in the trans, in it? shit. Emerson, what is it? Trans-Saharan. Trans okay, so they need desert to do the Trans-Saharan trade route. Okay, all right, what's another vocab term that we can use that talks about increasing trade in Africa? Come on, what do you got, Lily? Camisaris are a little bit in Africa, but let's not like fall like like ride or die that one. What do we got, uh, Stella? When they started trading into like people for more goods. Is that really what they're making a lot of their money on? Come on, guys, they're doing trade. Okay, what else we got, Marla? Okay, it's an exchange of food, but don't tell me food. Food doesn't score you any points. I'm looking for specific evidence. Gold is not vocab, okay? I actually don't know if Henry knows what gold is, but he does know what food is, and that's why it's not a vocab term. Uh, Emerson. Champa rice. Champa rice. Okay, so we have two vocabs. Why do they need champa rice? Come on, why do they need it? What do you got, uh, Izzy? No agrable land. Got it. Okay, so then we're going to come down to analysis. Okay, remember the question is asking you identify one way in which African states or societies cha cha let me try that again changed as a result of the spread of Islam in the period 1200 to 1450. So, how did Islam 
Bring this, do this, Rohan. There you go, societies evolved from nomadic to kingdoms and empires. There you go, kingdoms slash empires. Perfect. Okay, flip it to the other side of that paper. So you're only using one paper, but flip it over. Do it now. At the top of your new sheet of paper, you always write down what essay, essay Q, number two, essay Q, stimulus. Isn't that what, yeah, we're doing stimulus. Make sure you write stimulus. Here we go. As you see, all the questions are labeled A, B, C, so you will always label your answers A, B, C. Here we go. All right, you are writing this down. If I'm writing it, you are writing it. Here's my prompt. One way, African states changed as a result of Islam in the, in the period of 1200 to 1450 is because it will increase trade in the region. What did I just do, ladies and gentlemen? I restated the prompt, and I correctly identified the topic or the answer. Is everyone clear on that? I just went through two things in one second. Very short, very simple. I got two points from one sentence. Here we go. Now I have to provide two pieces of evidence. The implementation of camels in caravans, oh my god, look at me with all this information, in caravans allowed trade to occur through the Saharan Desert. which will lay the uh, which will begin trans-saharan trade trans-saharan trade route there you go okay so african societies traded goods like slaves, gold, like slaves and gold for food items, like champa rice, due to agricultural shortcomings. Oh my god, I love it. Of the land. Okay, so now I'm at my analysis. So I've written three sentences. I've nailed three points. Here we go. <laughs> so, due to trade bringing more food to Africa, African nomadic groups. will evolve into kingdoms and empires with food food stability achieved yeah nice okay that's it we've just finished a now I want you to know, I'm currently writing one of your essays we're doing tonight, yeah? That you're doing over the weekend. Are you turning this in? Yeah, yeah, it's 10 points. Every single thing that you do in this class gets you points. You are not here to waste your time. So, you are turning this in. I need to get it. It needs to have everything I need. All right, go back to your planning sheet. Here we go. Let's look at B. Let's keep it moving. 
Here we go. Explain how one specific African region was affected by the spread of Islam in 1200 to 1450. Oh my God, did you see it says region? So Samantha Bennett constantly talking about regions? Why? That's how your essays are written. You have to know your regions. All right, what do we got for content here? Thomas. West Africa, of course. We love West Africa. Here we go. Who can give me something from West Africa that affected? What do you got, Joshua? Uh, Mali. You can't just say Mali because that doesn't answer any of the questions. Um, it's on, like, 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 Mali Empire. No, you can't just say Mali Empire. That's like saying, like, oh, I'm hungry. United States. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Jade. Uh, there you go. Do you see why that's a better answer? Sundita. Okay, and what does he do, Jane? He converted to Islam. Sorry. Is he convert himself or? Uh, he converts the region, converts his empire. His empire to Islam. Why? Attract traders. Got it. Okay, what's another piece of evidence? We got Sundita. West Africa, what else are we going to do? Thomas. Well, that's a, like you, you give me full statements here. I can't be on in Joshua's case and you just throw out Mansa Musa. Like, did you hear her answer? She explained how it ties back. Come on, man. Um, uh, Mansa Musa uh, made a pilgrimage to Mecca. So, him walking to Mecca is going to lead it. No. Come on. What does Mansa Musa do? Think about it. Come on. You know the vocab. <laughs> You have to know your content well enough that you can put it in a specific way. Mansa Musa's Hajj is not what's going to put this on the map. What does Mansa Musa do in Malai that puts Malai on the map? We talk about it all the time. Donald. He converts to Islam. No, he does not. Mansa Musa is born a Muslim. What do you got? Um, he starts using uh, Muslim architecture in his... Series. Okay, that is a great answer. And, uh, but you have to have a proof. Do you know a mosque in Malai? Now, are you an AP art? Okay, well, then you're never going to learn one. <laughs> AP art does know one. It's the mosque in Dejin, but I haven't taught you that, so I don't want that in there. <laughs> Joshua? Uh, what about Timbuktu? You can't just, hi, speak to me in full sentences, Joshua. Like, you see literally what we're doing. Speak to me in full sentences. I've been talking about this for weeks. What about Islamic Do you see how that's a better answer than Timbuktu? Yes, thank you. Speak to me in, some, in sentences. Timbuktu becomes Islamic scholarship. Do you see? And who's behind that? Thomas? Ah, do you see how that's a better answer than him going on a, a hajj? Yes, Thomas? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So, Timbuktu becomes an Islamic scholarship because of Mansa Musa. Here we go. Flip it back to your essay, paragraph B. Okay, <laughs> looking at my prompt, explain how one specific African region is affected by the spread of Islam. Sure. Trans Shut up. The, re uh, the African region of West Africa was affected. By Islam in the period 1200 to 1450 because of um, actually that scores that scores because we said what region that's fine leave it alone all right here we go um, you need to know the leader, uh, let's, sorry, it's hard sitting up here. Sundita, the leader of Malai, will convert his kingdom to attract Arab traders to enrich his people. Okay. Mansa Musa
will lead West Africa, West Africa's Malai into the into the center of the Islamic world by creating a an Islamic center of learning in the city of Timbuktu. Okay, we didn't plan out the analysis. So now that we've written all these things down, after you write all of your evidence down, then you go back to the thing. Explain how one specific African region was affected by the spread of Islam, 1200 to 1450. Islam will transform Malai from a rural kingdom into a metropolis respected by the world's strongest Islamic countries. For its Devotion to Allah. There you go. Done. Okay. So, I restate the prompt. I answer the question all in one sentence. I then provide one to two sentences. So far, I've only been doing two sentences to provide my evidence to show that I actually know what I'm talking about. And then I tie it all together. Because of all these things I just talked about, it becomes a center and it becomes well respected. There we go. Flip it to the other side. Let's plan out our C. Here we go. C. Um, explain one way in which existing African religious or cultural traditions influence the practice of Islam in Africa in the period of 1200 to 1450. This is a question about syncretism. You should have known that immediately. All right. What is something that is syncretic that is happening between? Give me some examples of syncretism. What are some examples of syncretism, Gianni? Where's that in Africa, dude? This whole question's on Africa. So, no. Rohan. Yes! Swahili is a perfect example because Swahili is made up of what, Rohan? Bantu and Arabic. And in case anyone didn't know, Rohan, Bantu is the what? Absolutely. Bantu is the cultural component. Now, this means that Islam is going to spread. What are some terms that we can use? Swahili is the answer, so it can't be our thing. So what are some vocab terms that we can use to support Swahili? Thomas. That would absolutely spore. Uh, just be careful. Disporic communities, fine. Do you have an example of one? I, you can't just keep using Swahili. That's the difference. That's why. It's a great answer. And if you could come up with one of their names, but I know you haven't gotten them in APR in history, which is why I know you're kind of struggling. Does anyone know of a name? Axum. Remember, what is Axum famous for? Hi, do you see how important my content is? Yeah. Are we also thinking, oh, these vocab terms are pretty damn important. Yes. Because if you can't do it, because we cannot defend a sport community without Samantha Bennett carrying it, so guess what we're crossing off? Because if you can't defend it, you can't write about it. So here we go. What is something else? So Healy, what's another cultural thing that we can defend? Donald? Um, buildings, or they don't really have a ton of buildings because this is their first empires that are rising. And how are you going to write that in an essay? Can we agree? Jade? No, too vague. All right, griots, ladies and gentlemen. What are griots? 
Storytellers. And why do they play a big role here? Uh, There you go. And they're influential. Got it. Okay. So now we have something perfect. Let's go. All right. Here we go. C. We're writing your next one. Here we go. For me, I have to flip it over. I don't know if you need to flip it over. All right. Here we go. C. Explain one way in which existing African religious or cultural traditions are influenced by the practice of Islam. All right. One way. African religions and culture are influenced by Islam is the creation of Swahili. Swahili is made from Bantu languages or cultural foundation of uh, cultural foundation of Africa and the blending with Arabic or the future of Africa due to trade. Griots will use this new language to enrich and spread the histories of Africa. Sure. There we go, because we just explained what it is. Now they know we know what it is. Okay, so the blending of the past and the future with Swahili shows how significant the rise of Islam It, well, was in Africa. There you go. Walk away. All right, perfect. I just wrote one of your essays for you. How many more you got? Two. Two. So let's plan them, shall we? Okay. Here we go. So that's your essay. So when you turn your essays in, this is for the one I just wrote for you and the other two that you are going to work on. We're going to start planning here in a second. You need to have both your planning and essay. You should write them all on the same sheet of paper. Is everyone clear on that? Flip it back and forth. That way we're not wasting paper, but you need to plan on all your essays. Which one do you want to do? Prompt one or stimulus four? Pick an answer, guys. The faster you go, the better your life is. Prompt four? All right, here we go. Flip it over to prompt four. Okay. Oh, stimulus four. Sorry. Stimulus four. I'm writing on the top of my notes. Stimulus number four. Here we go. All right. It does not seem to me that the Jewish people can be the cause of the general epidemic throughout the, uh, throughout the whole world, as many suggest. My reasoning is as follows. First, it is well known that in most places where the Jewish people dwell, they did die in droves from the exact same disease as the Christians. If they really caused the epidemic, then why would they have not killed, uh, then they would not have killed themselves and others of their faith. Second, Many people say that the Jews poisoned the wells, causing the disease. This is also doubtful because after the wells full of polluted water had been purified, the people still died in great numbers. Further, in cities that used water only from the great rivers like Danube and inhabitants also died in large numbers. Moreover, even after all the Jews in many places had been killed and were completely driven out for nearly two years prior, the disease now strikes. In these same places just as powerfully as before. Conrad of Menberg, German philosopher and theologian, educated at the University of Paris concerning the mortality in Germany, book written in Latin, 1350. In your response, be sure to address all parts of the question, use complete sentences, and outline a bulleted list alone is not acceptable. Here we go. All right. 
Describe the historical situation in which Conrad of Memberg wrote this book. Oh, God, guys. I've already talked to Rohan. What do you got? Nash. Black Plague. Black Plague. Okay, so. Okay. Black Plague. So, what is it? We have to have a little blurb about it. We have to explain it. What do you got, Charlie? Disease that kills. Fine. I mean, that's kind of like mare. Where does it come from? We know where it comes from. Let's say where it comes from, Charlie. What? No, where does it originate, my love? Oh, no. What is it, Dylan? From East Asia. Okay. We need some evidence. What is our evidence that we can use to support this? Come on. What do we know about it? Oh, no. What do you got, Rinkus? Silk Road. I'll accept Silk Road for today because it's week one. I'll accept Silk Road. Okay. And what's another vocab term that we can use to support it? We need to have two vocab terms, people. You saw the rubric, Dylan. I mean, sure. All right, here we go. Take out, flip it to the other side. Stimulus number four. How much time do I have? <coughs> Stimulus number four. Here we go. Okay. Conrad. Amenberg. Wrote. About. The Black Death. In Europe. Done. Okay. Black Death was a disease that originated in East Asia and spread by the Silk Road. Silk Road's caravans carrying both goods and diseases. Okay. This is a pretty straightforward question. Do you see how this is a lot more closed-minded and the other one's a little more open? Yes. So do we need to do a synthesis for this? No. Okay. Let's go to B. Describe one argument that Conrad Menberg makes regarding the Jewish people and the spread of diseases. What do we got? I already talked to Thomas. I already talked to Rinkus. I already talked to Lily. Viola. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Simplify. What? Yeah, you mean they wouldn't kill, Jews wouldn't have killed Jews? Yeah. Okay, let's keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> it's a lot up here. Kind of, yeah, but I think there's a simple argument to make. What do you got, Nola? What they said about how the Jews had poisoned the wells. All right, poisoning the wells. I think that one's easier to defend. Can we agree? Poisoning wells. Okay, that's one of the arguments. Okay, so we need some evidence to support this. We need to be able to use some historical evidence of something. What do you got? Okay. Oh, sure. Okay, so poisoning of the wells, everyone still died. Sure. Okay, what is some evidence that we're going to use to prove our point or prove his point? One argument that Conrad makes regarding the Jewish people is the spread of diseases. Poisoning wells. We know that. Who can give me some actual historical information of why it didn't work? Viola. Bye. Bye. Have fun. You've got two essays. Now, while you are writing your essays at home, you need to have your completed essay in front of you and follow the formats. Is everyone clear? Okay. How many essays are due on Monday? Three. How many completed essays will you have in hand? Three. Three. Three.
I already wrote one for you. You only actually have two. I want to see planning and essays. Bye. Oh my God, so much fun, right? I know, if you do your job, I do mine. I'm not setting you up for failure, but I'm also not gonna do all the work.